CBS 6 News starts now. Good evening, everybody. I am Tom Esch, and we start today with what's been like what seems to be our first impactful snowfall of the season. We take a live look to begin outside right now with our sky cam in Troy as we speak about 30 degrees. You can see the bridge out there tonight as well and the snow continuing to build up. Let's take a walk here through the capital region here as we begin this show. This is how much the snowfall impacted the neighborhoods in Boston Spa today. You can see here it was tough visibility wise for much of the day as well the snow coming down pretty quickly and coating those roads maybe making driving quite difficult i was up there today it was not easy it was slick at times now let's take a look here at schenectady earlier in the day this was just before four o'clock this afternoon you can see it building up there on the trees how heavy it came down here at times seeing the full might of the snowfall here as the day went on now we want to take a live look at the roads with our cbs 6 mobile weather authority sponsored by mohawk honda this evening as as you can see cars out there on the roads but not much blacktop to be had just those two lanes you see sometimes that's on route seven near the traffic circle a lot of snow there on the sides as well definitely be careful here as you're making your way about town as the evening goes on and for more on what the evening will look like in the future here and in the past what did it all look like here today meteorologist craig adams joins us now thanks tom we have snow continuing to fall this evening as you can see on the radar here the amounts of snow right now coming down in more or less a lighter fashion with a few pockets of moderate snowfall. Playing the time lapse here, you can see how the snow has been working its way across the area through the afternoon and into the early evening. It's going to be gradually tapering off as the evening progresses. Let's take a look at some of the amounts from our WeatherNet 6 spotters. Amsterdam, right around the 6-inch mark. Valacia picking up about 5.5. Clifton Park, 4 inches. Scotia, 3.5. Here at our CBS 6 studios, right around the 3-inch mark. Land Grove, Vermont, an inch and a half. As you move further northward, the mounts have been a little bit less as you get up over the far northern areas, Lake George, across Vermont, and into some of the northern reaches of the Adirondacks. But a lot of us in that three to four inch range and even a little bit more. Look at this photo here from Michelle Quinn in Postonkill showing about five inches of snow there. We're going to be looking at some more pretty wintry pictures here in a few moments and also talk about how things will be evolving as we go beyond the snow event. So look for lingering snow this evening. Another inch accumulation, maybe slightly more in spots. It all tapers off towards the midnight hour. All right, more coming up on how the week progresses because there's an op another opportunity for what uh, looks to be probably a mixed precipitation type event. And we'll tell you more about that coming up shortly and talk a little bit more about today's event too. Tom? Yeah, of course, you can tune in to the latest weather updates on air or online by downloading the CBS 6 Weather Authority app available in the App Store or on Google Play. Well, the constant snow making a significant impact across the region today. And new tonight, we're told, that includes the search for Schenectady teen Samantha Humphrey, who's now been missing for more than two weeks. Schenectady police telling CBS 6 weather like this sidelines them from searching. This is video taken from a few days ago, but of course now snow impacting everything. They unfortunately had no more updates to give today, which means we're moving into the third week of the search for Humphrey. She was reported missing on Friday, November 25th, last seen in the area of Riverside Park in the stockade. Head to CBS6Albany.com or the WRGB News app right now for a timeline with all the details of her disappearance, including CBS6's interviews with her mother, grandparents, along with information on how to contact police if you have any information. New at 6 tonight, several community groups and organizations are calling out anti-Semitism by putting together a coalition to help move forward and educate the world on the impact of hateful rhetoric. CBS 6's Kalani Aaron has the story. A member of my community had an incident in a pet store where somebody saw um, a Hanukkah display for dogs and they said, I pity the dog that has to live with Jews. And they had to confront it in the middle of a pet store. Um, this stuff trickles down. As we come off a year where anti-Semitic incidents were at an all-time high and New York State led the nation in those hateful encounters, according to the Anti-Defamation League, I spoke with several area religious leaders about the appropriate way to move forward. So how do we, in this very particular day and space, 
partner with the Jewish community in Schenectady, but how do we also open spaces so that solidarity can be a way in which all communities who are marginalized can come together and one, be with each other and, we f uh, and be for each other. And teaching solidarity may be the way to go as the Jewish community is one of sadly too many minority groups that have been marginalized. Reverend Wendy Bartell says there is a way to unite all against the hate. Even if our religious traditions have differences, we also have some very important things that unite us. Peace, justice, love. When we center on those things, we realize that those are the essentially antidote to hatred. As we head into another year, the Schenectady Clergy Against Hate is asking the community to unite together and make a pledge against racism and anti-Semitism, knowing that in the face of fear and oppression, unity and education will prevail. This coalition, that pledge, is an example of us coming together and demonstrating that we are going to commit ourselves to address it by calling it out, labeling it, and educating people on why it's wrong. It's not enough just to say you're racist, you're an anti-Semite. You have to teach why. Reporting for CBS 6 News, I'm Kalani Aaron. Thank you, Kalani. Important message there. Moving on, a Georgia man has been arrested after allegedly pulling a gun out during a large fight that took place in the very early hours of this morning on Ontario Street in Albany. Police say they responded to a large fight between Western Avenue and State Street around 1 a.m. About 50 people, as many as 60, out in the middle of the road. They say as they were dispersing the crowd, one officer saw a man remove a gun from a bag he was wearing. Officers say this handgun was recovered from Luis Romero. He's from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Officers were able to safely arrest him, and Romero is now facing weapons charges as they continue to investigate the fight as a whole. A key suspect in the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, is in U.S. custody. The Libyan man, Abu Aguila Massoud, was charged by American authorities two years ago. At the time, he was in Libyan custody. As of today, he's in American custody. On December 21st, 1988, the New York-bound Pan Am flight exploded less than an hour after taking off from London. It killed 259 people in the air, 11 people on the ground. The majority of the victims were American, 35 of which were Syracuse University students at the time, and more than a dozen of them were from the capital region. Massoud, the third Libyan intelligence officer to be charged, will face the federal charges in the United States, the first of those that have been charged to do so, scheduled to be arraigned in Washington this week. Syracuse University Chancellor Kent Savoyerud putting this statement out that says, in part, today's news is a significant milestone in a decades-long process to bring those responsible for this despicable act of justice. We remain steadfast in our commitment to remember, honor, and reflect on the legacy of the lives lost. Tonight at 11, you'll hear from the family of one of the victims from the Capital Region. Former U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara says he believes the Department of Justice is on the path to charging former President Donald Trump. The DOJ has appointed a special counsel to investigate two criminal cases against the former president. Veteran prosecutor Jack Smith is heading up the probes into former President Trump's actions related to the January 6th riots at the Capitol and the seizure of classified documents from his estate at Mar-a-Lago. Barrara says the DOJ won't proceed unless it has an exceptionally strong case. You generally do not proceed unless you have a great likelihood of success. But the prerequisite is that you believe that the person is guilty of the crime, right? And, and when you're charging somebody uh, in, in maybe the highest stakes trial in some ways in history, because it's a former president of the United States, you've got to have all your ducks in a row. Barrara says he thinks those charges could come down in the next month. Hospitalizations due to COVID are on the rise again, putting the nation's elderly at an increased risk. The trend for hospitalization has remained flat for young people, but rose among older adults by 30% in the last two weeks. It comes as less than half of nursing home residents and just 23% of staff are up to date on their COVID shots. Nursing home leaders say they're facing complacency, misinformation, COVID fatigue, and their efforts to get people boosted. In recent months, those 85 years old and older have accounted for 40% of deaths due to COVID-19. The Mohawk Hudson Humane Society and the Best Friends Animal Society teamed up this weekend hoping to find some animals a new home. These are some of the cute pets they were looking for. 
a new family. They hope people choose to adopt the pet instead of buying one when they are thinking about bringing a new friend into their own family. MHHS said that, says they have experienced a 29% increase in intakes over 2021, which has pushed the shelter to the limits of providing humane and safe care for its animals and for the staff and volunteers who care for them too. Really cute little puppies there. Still to come, we'll take a deep dive into how Great Britain is doing following the Brexit controversy. Cheryl Atkinson has more on the issue in this week's Full Measure. That's coming up next as CBS 6 at 6 continues. Greg. Well, it's definitely been a wintry day out there. The weather, though, does get quieter as we work into the first half of this upcoming week before another storm system takes aim later in the week. We'll tell you more about that when we come back. Three years since Brexit took place overseas. Full measure Cheryl Atkinson reports from England to see how the historic breakup with the EU was going. Marc Francois is one of the most famous Brexiteers. We were able to achieve the fastest rollout of uh, COVID vaccines in Europe because we weren't bound by EU bureaucracy. Speaking to us in his parliamentary office in London, he says the COVID experience provided the first important mark in the Brexit success column, the first big crisis Great Britain faced on its own. And we're now global Britain, I believe will be a force again on the world stage. There's no denying they accomplished the impossible, what most said couldn't be done. As for the results, on our visit to Great Britain, we found mixed reviews. Parliament member Stella Creasy. And it's only now that the British public are starting to see the problems when they see the big queues of people at the borders trying to get across to Europe or the increase in the cost of food that they're facing because of the impact on our supply chain or the people who haven't been able to go and work in Europe in the way they used to be able to or travel in Europe as freely as they used to be able to because Brexit has happened. So it's having a bit of a delayed effect, but unfortunately the effects are becoming very, very clear now. One unexpected outcome of all this is that Prime Minister Boris Johnson, credited with making the impossible happen, was chased out of office after the mission was accomplished. Over the summer, less than three years after his landslide victory, Johnson's own party gave its Brexit champion the heave-ho. There should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. So he wasn't able to deliver a really good example of how we've got Brexit and it's come out the way he said it was, you know, Britain liberated, Britain triumphant, that hasn't worked. And so then people started to say, well, if that hasn't worked, what's the rest of this about? And then they looked at him and that's been his demise, I think. David Cowling is a senior visiting research fellow at the King's College University in London. There's certainly buyer's remorse. Um, if you look at the polling, there is uh, a range of people who now believe that it was uh, the wrong decision um, and also believe that the government hasn't handled it well. I'd ask those same people, OK, it's gone badly, do you want to go back in? No. So I suppose it's a case of living with what we've got but not being very happy with the, with the outcome. Today there's talk of Grexit, Frexit, Italexit and Dexit, movements in Greece, France, Italy and Germany to withdraw from the European Union, but everybody says that'll never happen. For Full Measure, I'm Cheryl Ackeson. All right, so weather alert mode continues here with all the snow we've had. Craig Adams joins us now. Craig, it's a snowy day out there. Yep, a lot of folks uh, seeing the snow coming down and uh, causing the roads to get slick and making the landscape look nice and pretty it, out there. It does too. look nice. Let's take a look now outside. The CBS 6 Mobile Weather Authority, sponsored by Mohawk Honda, live here on the roads here tonight. Craig, kind of how they look throughout the day. Yeah, again, if you're traveling this evening, Definitely use a little extra uh, time for your planning because of the fact that there are slick conditions out there. Let's show you some of the sites from around the area today. Here's how things looked over on Green Island. Thanks to Holly Randolph for this picture. You can see everything there looking nicely covered with the snowfall. How about another view? We'll go down to Koksaki and there's the view from Debbie Spienberg. And you can see the snow there from what has fallen down in her backyard. So again, this is... Pretty common sights across the area today as the snowfall 
for a lot of us in that three, four, five inch range, there's been some lesser amounts as you head off to the north and east. Here's a look at our radar right now, and you can see the time lapse of the snow working its way across the area today. Now, tonight, still going to have lingering, mostly light snow, maybe a couple of pockets of briefly moderate snow. Additional accumulations, another inch, maybe slightly more, but minor. And then everything will be winding down a bit later on tonight. Let's take a look at our Fryhopper Sky Cam in Albany, 28 degrees. You can see the visibility definitely obscured because of the light snow that's falling there. And as we take a look at our Fryhopper Sky Cam from Schenectady, 29 degrees light snow in the air, along with uh, Glens Falls, 27 degrees at the current time with some light snow also there. Here's a look at the temperatures. It's been all snow today, no mixing. That's because the temperatures have been cold enough uniformly across the area, generally in the upper 20s to right around 30 degrees. Won't see a lot of variation tonight. There'll be a drop of a couple degrees, but that'll be about it. Let's take a look at how things are evolving. Area of low pressure tracking across the state this evening will be pushing off to our east later tonight. And as it does so, the snow comes to an end. Tomorrow, drier air coming down will allow for clearing to take place. Probably going to start off a bit cloudy, but then skies will be brightening up as we head into the midday period. So tonight, watch what happens here. This evening, we still got some snow around. And then by midnight, a lot of this is all pretty much drying up. Tomorrow morning, we're starting off cloudy. And then we're seeing the skies brightening as we head towards lunchtime and onward through the afternoon. Tomorrow night will be a clear night. Should be pretty cold, too, with this new snow on the ground. Clear skies, light winds. That'll set the stage for some uh, pretty frosty temperatures out there. A lot of us down into the uh, mid-teens. And then Tuesday looks like a nice bright day for us as we should have quite a bit of sunshine about the area. And it looks nice and quiet onwards into the midweek period too with Wednesday looking fairly bright. All right, let's take a look at the forecast and size it up here. Tonight, lingering snow this evening. As we said, another inch or slightly more, but uh, minor accumulations winding down around midnight, mid and upper 20s for the temperatures. Tomorrow, look for the clouds to give way to clearing as we head into the midday and afternoon period. 32 to 37. Now, onwards into the week, it's quiet through Wednesday here. And then clouds will increase on Thursday, but it'll stay dry. Thursday night into Friday, it looks like a mixed precipitation type event. It's too early to break down what type will be more predominant, but it does look like we could see a combination of snow, some sleet, freezing rain, and rain all combined there as we work into that Thursday night, Friday time frame. And then some lingering snow showers into Saturday with dry weather for the second half of the weekend. So as you can see by that temperature pattern, it is indeed going to be feeling like a winter week out there and looking like it as well. All right, it's time now for all the sports action today. Here's AJ. Hey, thanks, Craig. Coming up in sports, it's certainly football weather outside. We'll find out how New York teams played earlier today in the NFL, and we're going to take a look at some local college basketball action as well. All that coming up right after the break. Sports, sponsored by your local upstate Chevy dealers. Hey, I'm AJ Pankowski. Tonight in sports, we had another action packed NFL Sunday. Some of these teams battling the elements in December as they push towards the playoffs, but that's football weather. So let's get into these highlights. We'll start in Orchard Park. The Bills taking on the Jets in a crucial divisional game. Both teams battling each other and the weather. And right before the half, someone finally scores. Josh Allen throwing it to Dawson Knox. Look at the effort and leap over the defender for the touchdown. Bills up 7-0. Here come the Jets. It's Zonovan Knight who makes a couple defenders miss, and he scores a touchdown to tie this up. And then the Bills answer right away. Next possession, Josh Allen takes it on the keeper, and he gets the Bills back on top. Mike White here. He would leave the game for some time. He was getting crushed today he did return though and look at this for the Jets a blocked punt turned into a safety they have hope again after some field goals 2012 Bills now last chance for the Jets the pass is batted down it certainly wasn't pretty but Buffalo hangs on to beat the Jets by a final score 20 to 12. 
Over to the Meadowlands now. Giants taking on an Eagles squad that, with a win, Philly could clinch a playoff spot. Already up seven in the second. Eagles going to go for it, and they're going for it all. Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, easy touchdown. 14-0 Eagles shortly after that. Hurts going deep again. He's got A.J. Brown who comes down with it, and he also scores with these. This one getting out of control. But the Giants try to fight, and before the half, Daniel Jones connects with Isaiah Hodgins. 21-7 now in the second half, though. All Philly. Jalen Hurts. Hurts this time he runs it in himself what can't he do the Eagles would continue to pour it on their divisional foe this team seems unstoppable they have an MVP Cal quarterback Philly clinched a playoff spot winning by a final score 48 22 now as for our last local team just a reminder New England Patriots didn't play today Pats are in action tomorrow night Monday night football at the Arizona Cardinals coming off two straight losses New England it's six and six but they're very much in the playoff picture look for Bill Belichick to have his men ready to bounce back against a struggling Arizona team bringing things back to the capital region to the hardwoods Sienna men's took on Delaware on the road today and the Saints got out to a hot start but their offense would slow down soon after Delaware shot over 50 percent from the field and when that happens it's tough to beat anybody one positive for the Saints guard Jace Johnson recorded a new career high 21 points but the defending CAA conference champions were too much for Sienna today Delaware wins 75-64 and finally, on to the women's side of the ball. Union College traveled to Middlebury today. This was definitely a game to forget for the Dutch women. They never held a lead in this one. were outscored 21-6 in the first quarter, and they couldn't get back in it after that. Middlebury made six three-pointers on the day, caused 17 turnovers. They dominated Union every aspect of the game. Union College falls big, 49-28. Not the best day on the court for our local colleges, but it was definitely an exciting day in the NFL, guys. Busy day for both of you. All the football and basketball weather. I didn't have to do anything today. What a <laughs> nice time for me. Well, we can give you a scraper and you can go clean out the windshield. Uh, okay, for us. Yeah, put, me, put me right to work. We'll be back here at 11 with all your updates here as we continue to watch the weather in the Capital Region. Thanks for joining us, everybody.